hi guys how you doing you guys today i'm going to be doing my makeup while i answer some of your questions about my relocation to the uk okay so to the uk okay i say okay a lot anyway <laughs> and i say anyway a lot and i say you know <laughs> anytime i'm editing my videos i'm like what is all this what is wrong with you <laughs> Yeah, I'm going to be doing my makeup today. I'm going to be answering your questions, specifically the ones about how I am adjusting to life in the UK, how I am adjusting, how my husband is adjusting, how my kids are adjusting, how we as a family are basically getting, you know, getting by. So anyway, I need to be doing my makeup because I'm about to film a hair video. I don't have time. This is 9 a.m. I was actually supposed to film by 9 a.m. But this is actually 9.30 because I had to do some things for Sophia before I came here. So let me not even start feeling like I have enough time because I really don't, okay? I want to say let's just dive right in. No, we're not just diving right in. I don't talk tired. <laughs> Well, YouTubers say, after two minutes, you'll not be like, let's just dive right into it. Uh -uh, you're not diving. You, have, you should have you should have dived since. <laughs> okay. So now, one of the questions I have gotten, or not even questions, one of the comments I've gotten a lot is, oh, relocation looks good on you. Oh my goodness, your skin is glowing. You look so happy. So I've gotten those comments a lot. And you guys, thank you. But... <laughs> <laughs> hey, wo. Hey, 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 wo. hey, wait till my eye don't see for this UK. <laughs> What did my eye don't see? What did my eye didn't see? It's not funny. So the first question, I know it hasn't been that long since you arrived in the UK, but how has the transition been for your children? What's the one thing you found difficult to take in? Okay, so for my children, how has the transition been? The transition for my kids, okay, let me just break it down kid by kid, okay? So for Cora, I think the transition has been quite easy for her so yeah cora has made friends she's doing well in school you know she has won awards already um she has joined <laughs> not only did she win awards she has actually joined like you know special clubs in school not club what do you call it now special groups i think she joined a special group for maths and all that so i would say socially she's doing well however sometimes cora is to break down i won't call it breakdown let me go for bitch not breaking down but sometimes she will remember like the other day, we were on a video call with Mom C, that's with my mom, and then Cora saw somebody in the background that looked like Elizabeth, and she now started crying that, oh, she misses Elizabeth, you know, blah, 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 blah. My parents were even asking her, Nigeria or UK? She said she prefers Nigeria. Yeah, so for her, even though she's adjusting to life here, she's doing well here, sometimes you can tell that she misses her life in Nigeria. But the thing that sometimes confuses me is that, even though she was crying now that, oh, that she misses Nigeria and all of that, she doesn't talk about Nigeria that much, okay? She doesn't talk about her friends in Nigeria. She doesn't talk about Nigeria that much. Like, it's not something that she even brings up. She doesn't talk about her friends. She doesn't talk about Nigeria. So, it's kind of strange that for someone who doesn't talk about Nigeria at all, she can break down like that when the thought of Nigeria comes up, okay? So, that's it for Cora. For Ava, Ava is actually doing well as well. Ava has friends, but, you know, not as many as Cora does. And Ava is a more quiet person, so she's not... I don't know, she's... You can't really know what's going on in her mind that much. You know, she has had a few tantrums here and there. She has thrown tantrums a few times and I'm like, this tantrum you're throwing, is it because you are finding it hard adjusting to life here or it's just your age or it's just, you know, the situation? So, so I can't really tell for certain with Ava, but I know that generally Ava is also doing well. But again, she doesn't talk about Nigeria. She doesn't talk about her friends in Nigeria. She doesn't talk about Nigeria at all. So it's like... I don't know. Are you? <laughs> I don't know what to make of it. However, sometimes they remember some things that happened in Nigeria. Like they can remember that. Oh, mommy, remember the time that you put crown on my hair in in Nigeria? Do you get? So she can remember things like that. But she doesn't just stay and say, "Oh, I miss this person," or you know, "I wish I was in Nigeria," or "How oh, I." you get anyway so that's it about Ava. So for Sophia, Sophia is actually adjusting well as well. But for me, I feel like Sophia is the worst hit somehow. Somehow. <laughs> I don't know how, how to explain it. Sophia is the worst hit somehow because Sophia is not going to school. So for someone that was going to school in Nigeria, for someone that had friends in Nigeria, coming here and they're spending all day with me. Not just friends. She even had people around. People like Amarachi and Elizabeth. People like Agitman. You know, like she had 
a lot of people around her all the time that she used to see all the time going from that and then coming here to just seeing only me most of the time you know then her siblings when they come back from school and her father when he comes back from work but 70% of the time she's with me I feel like it's affecting her a little bit so I noticed that whenever we go out Sophia that is normally very jovial and friendly whenever we go out and someone is trying to say hi to her she just moves her face doesn't want to talk to them she, you know she acts like she's very very shy if they look at her and just you know how a child is playing and people around are just smiling at the child if she catches their eyes or if she has eye contact with them she quickly removes her eyes the other day we had someone from the nhs come and visit a health worker i don't know what the person is she didn't introduce herself she told me what she is but to be honest i'm not putting for my head but yeah we had a, a house visit for sophia from what the lady said after my husband registered us with the nhs um like it popped up because of sophia's age it popped up for them to come and you know, it triggered their own visits, basically. In fact, I, I actually liked that visit because that visit actually helped me a lot. So when she came, she asked me so many questions about Sophia, how we're adjusting, how life has been here, anything I need, you know, was telling me what to do about certain things, how to go about certain things. What I really needed, in fact, the first week I got here, basically, is what I got last week. That visit was very, very helpful because she told me a lot of things. She also asked me about my own well-being as well, told me about different resources, if I'm lonely and I'm looking for like a mother group a mommy group and stuff like that she gave me links to so many things you know so many resources that i was really grateful for um but from what she observed about a uh, um, sophia you know sophia too did that thing when she was talking to sophia she had not really answer her but she just observed that you know that um it's because sophia has had a lot of major changes that's why she's acting like that but that if she has stayed in our house longer she knows that sophia would have interacted with her like because sophia was coming closer to her somehow not too close though, but you know throughout the course of the woman staying in our house sophia went from sitting at the edge of the chair to sitting beside me close to the woman okay so she was saying that I should not be worried that it's just that she's going to take a longer time to warm up to people because everything is new for her. The environment is new, the weather is new, the accent is new, <laughs> the the race of the people are new, you know, we don't really have that many blacks around here. So basically everything is new for Sophia because I brought it up to her that I don't like the way Sophia is almost becoming antisocial somehow. So she's not like, no, I should not even be worried about that. That is normal. I mean, look at now. She has had the biggest change and she can't really understand it the way her siblings will understand it. So that's part of why Sophia is like that, but I shouldn't be worried about it. And I was like, okay. So for those who are going to ask, my foundation is NAS Natural Radiant Longwear Foundation in Manau, okay, Manau or Manaus. While my concealer, the first one I use is the NARS concealer in Truffle, but it's a bit yellow. Then I now have it in Amand, it's a bit neutral. So that one is more my it works more with my skin tone than the yellow one. The yellow one is almost almost disappears whenever I use it. To be honest, it's almost like it's my skin skin color. This one is just a little brighter. Anyway, so that's what the woman said when it comes to Sophia. So she just told me places I could take Sophia to take her out to the park. Um, I try to do that sometimes. Then I noticed that whenever I go out with Sophia, she has so much energy. So she's always running. Like when we go to, to Eva's school and we're waiting to pick Eva, you will see Sophia running around, having fun, just laughing. You know, basically having fun that she's outside except when somebody talks to her, okay? That's it about the kids. Um, another adjustment the kids are going through is they are now more engaged in housework than before before housework was you know a suggestion <laughs> When we were in Nigeria, housework was like, not even just a suggestion. When we were in Nigeria, housework was like that thing they used to do because I'm trying to teach them how to work, you know. Now, housework is compulsory. Housework is like part of your life. You know, get choice, okay. But one thing I will always say is that one thing that helps my kids the most is that they are three, okay. They are three. They have all kinds of fun. They are three and they are all girls, okay. So, they have all kinds of fun together. When I say my kids play from morning till night, I mean my kids, uh, every opportunity they have to play they play they fight too or you know not not real fights all this mommy sophia said this mommy ever say my nose is like that mommy ever look at me mommy ever is, uh, 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 cora eva will come mommy cora is repeating after me all those kind of nonsense <laughs> kind of nonsense my mother i'm like if, if people don't 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 get out of here you think you think i have time for this rubbish you know even though i still i'll still be there forming judge for me uh, oh don't say that to your sister cora stop copying your sister the kind of things i used to judge in this house eh? cora stop copying your sister now eva stop looking at her like that now for the most part because they are three and you know they love each other and they're so happy to have each other they play a lot i don't even have that many toys for them i was even thinking that when i come here i'll be buying toys up and down nope 
I didn't buy that many toys for them, even though they have toys. Like I bought a few, but they don't have that many toys. So I noticed that because they don't have so many toys like they did in Nigeria, they are forced to improvise. So yesterday, Sophia took um, Eva took Indomie carton and uh, one cereal box and she made dollhouse for her baby so all of them were now playing with the dollhouse you know really having fun with that dollhouse for a long time they were playing house with um cardboard dollhouse it was when i even came and saw the thing they built it was so surreal to me like i had this children build this kind of thing they took so many things from my house though they even took my microfiber cloths to do like blankets and bed sheets and stuff like that for their babies for the most part because they are three i feel like it has helped them adjust very well because they have each other to play with with. They play a lot. Even for Sophia too, it helps her too because you know she has people she's talking with. Sophia's vocabulary has improved so much since we got here. Um, someone was pointing out in one of my videos that her accent is changing. I don't think so. Sophia's accent is still the same. Just that now she tries to act like she's um, doing a TV show. You know that's why sometimes her accent might change. But not that her accent has changed because of the environment because she doesn't even interact much with people here to start getting accent. The only person said that has gotten accent even small is Cora. And you guys know Cora's story now. Cora's will not be, not be today. <laughs> From the airport. Airport breeze gave Cora accent. Eva is beginning to have an accent as well. Um, sometimes when you ask her a question, she doesn't answer the way she answers. She used to answer in Nigeria. So yeah, that's it about the kids. Now let's move to me. Okay, before I move to my... Oh, let's move to my husband before I move to me. So, since we got here, my husband has been working a lot more than he was when he was in Nigeria. Now let me explain it like this. When my husband was in Nigeria, he was working in shifts. Okay, so in Nigeria, he was doing more like shift work so he would work like three weeks in a row every day every every single day then he will now stay at home for three weeks in a row and do nothing every single day not like do nothing like he'll still have sometimes he'll still reply some emails and um you know figure out some things for the for his work but for the most part when he was at home for that three weeks he didn't have to do so much for work he was just at home resting chilling and doing other house things and just helping with the house you know running the house basically so that was how he was when he was in nigeria so when he was at work he was at work when he was at home he was at home okay now that he's here he wakes up 4 30 every day sometimes four o'clock then he will have his bad dress up come here respond to emails do a lot of things before he will now come downstairs then around 6 30 to 7 he'll wake the kids up by that time i'm usually downstairs or i'm usually in the bathroom brushing my teeth and having my bath and, or washing my face right he will now wake the kids up and help them dress up like the kids bath themselves in the morning that is Cora and Eva they bat themselves in the morning while Sophia my husband bats her sometimes or he will just change her outfit because she has her bath at night so it was me that I even told him that he should stop batting her in the morning because she has her bath at night so I don't want that over washing for nothing she's not going anywhere she's not going to school nothing after he's done with Sophia then he will come downstairs and have breakfast by 7 o'clock you know then by 7 30 he's out of the house for work now he drives himself to work for over like 45 minutes when he was in Nigeria he wasn't driving himself to work so he'll drive himself to work for like 45 minutes every single day except saturdays and sundays and then when he comes back from work he comes up from work around 6 p.m he leaves work like 4 35 then he comes back home like 6 p.m so by the time he comes back home around 6 i already have dinner ready or i'm in the kitchen preparing dinner so after he removes his clothes and does one or two things he will now come have dinner he always has dinner with the kids i try to make them have dinner together and i'm saying them because i don't really eat when my kids are eating to be honest like i eat my own my own food it has always been like that so i've never been someone that likes structured eating i just eat anytime i feel like it <laughs> Anytime I feel like it is when I eat. Most times when they're having dinner, I just prepare dinner for them to eat. I usually don't eat with them. So the way we do it is that whenever he's having dinner, in fact, any meal that he's having, Sophia always sits by him. Sophia always sits by him. So any food he's having, he either feeds her her own from her plate or he feeds her from his plate. Actually, Eba, he feeds her Eba from his plate. But when it's other meals, he feeds her from her own plate. So because of that, I don't need to sit down there and feed them. Eva can sort herself out most times. Yeah, so after he's done with that, he then does one or two things with the kids and then he's back upstairs replying emails doing some work before he eventually sleeps so my husband goes to bed earlier than me he goes to bed around sometimes eight o'clock sometimes eight thirty sometimes nine but most times he goes to bed before me while me i'll just be taking care of the kids trying to get them ready for bed before i will now do my own thing and go and sleep sometimes i'm just editing video okay then on weekends he tries to study for his driving test because yes he has to get his driver's license okay even me i have to get mine but for him his own is quite urgent because he drives himself to work every day and he has only one year to basically get his driver's license so almost every night and on the weekends he studies for his driver's 
test. Then also on the weekend, he does most of the house chores, okay? Most of the house chores, all the washing of clothes, all the vacuuming of the house, all the cleaning, washing bathrooms and stuff. My husband does almost everything on the weekend because I spend the weekend doing hair videos, um filming my videos then also cooking sometimes then on sundays i fold all the laundry yeah so on sundays i fold all the laundry so that's why he has to make sure all the laundry is done on saturday and sometimes on sundays just so that i'll have all the clothes clean ready for me to fold on sundays okay yeah i'm really grateful for that because if he wasn't helping out with the house chores like that i won't be able to do my own job there is this youtube stuff i won't be able to do it the way i do it and put out content the way i put out content because there's a lot to do here there's always a lot of things to do um, we've tried to overlook some things some things that in nigeria my husband will insist that he will do here he has tried to overlook them just so that we don't kill ourselves when we are working too much so now some places will be scattered and my husband will just pass meanwhile in nigeria he will go and start arranging in nigeria my husband can wake up by 2 a.m eh not even 2 a.m. He won't even wake up. He will not just sleep. My husband will not sleep throughout the night. He will be walking up and down, arranging one thing or the other. Okay, but now that we are here and there are so many more things to do, he doesn't do that anymore. So he has just basically the weekend to do all that work. Then sometimes he takes the kids out on the weekend as well. When I'm filming, he'll just take them out. Not even sometimes, almost all the time. Especially on sundays if i'm filming on sundays after breakfast he just takes the kids and they go out and go and have fun or whatever I go and buy stuff then by the time he's coming back i'm already done filming or i'm almost done like a lot of times when he's still out he'll call me and ask me how far are you done are you finished and i'm like okay i'm almost done you guys can start coming back so that's what he does on the weekend so there's really no time for my husband to just sit down and relax there's really no time for that because there's so much to be done including the fact that he has to um pass his driver's test one time he can't even we don't we can't even afford not to pass that thing one time especially for him even for me sir, who has that kind of money to be wasting but he doesn't have that kind of time to even be doing it multiple times because he has so much to do in his workplace and about the work itself my husband's job here is a new position is a higher position okay than what he had in nigeria but it's a new position and it is in a different country so some of the things that they do here are not he's not familiar with them okay some of their processes like i mean he's familiar with the job in, in in general but some of their nitty-gritty how they run things here is different from how they run things in nigeria even though it's the same company okay so he has so much to learn when i say so much hey hey, hey. my can have one document with over 200 pages to read that's just one document and he will have like 50 of those documents i'm not exaggerating he will have like maybe 50 of those documents some of them 200 pages 50 pages 100 pages here and he has a short period to learn all those things and one thing about my husband is he does not play with his job anything he wants to do he does it well he's a very diligent person and his own diligence is not just in one aspect okay that's one thing that, that baffles me about my husband because me i'm diligent too but it's not in everything <laughs> It's not in everything I do. I have hierarchy of things I am diligent and excellent at. I have other things that I really don't give an F about. Okay, I don't really don't I really don't care about. So I don't stress myself for those things. But my husband is anything he decides to do, he wants to do it excellently well. He does not have hazard anything. When I say anything, I mean anything. I mean not just not just job, not just anything he, he sets his heart to do. He wants to do it very well. So he's kind of person that if he doesn't learn something, he's not going to rest, okay? To give you a little understanding of the kind of person he is, he said that when he entered university, he heard that people in the department don't need to get first class. And the lecturer told them that you can't get first class in that department. And that became his life's mission. So his life's mission was to get a first class. And he graduated with a first class, okay? He graduated with a first class from uni ben. so yeah he's that kind of person that if he sets his heart to do anything he is going to put his all into it okay so there's nothing like rest in my husband's vocabulary there's nothing like why don't you just leave this thing and rest yeah he will never rest my husband can never rest until he's done with with whatever it is that he really wants to do so aside the job being demanding there is housework okay there's the domestic side of things then there are also things that you have to do yourself okay for instance like when he had to get a car you know it was it was very it was an uphill task for my husband to even get a car so he finally got a car for me so we have two cars now so those two cars he's the one that washes the two cars he's the one that cleans the two cars even though i've told myself that i'm going to clean my car myself you know this weekend or next weekend i don't know one day <laughs> so he washes the cars himself he has to make sure there's fuel 
fuel in the car, he takes the two cars to go and buy fuel in them. You know, so many things that he does that if we were in Nigeria, it wouldn't have been that much of a big deal. We would have gotten somebody to do them. There was one time my car was having issues. It was giving a signal that we just didn't know what it was. Like he kept saying error, I'd be what was he even saying there, Seth? It was saying something like stop the car, to tell you stop the car, in the middle of the road though, to tell you stop the car, error, something like that. So he had to take the car to mechanic, had to go and pick the car. So all these things that when we were in Nigeria, we would just call, in fact, we had mechanic or speed dial. <laughs> We had our mechanic, we would just call the mechanic, he would just come take the car, go and find out what is wrong with the car and fix it and bring it back for us in the house, okay? So things like that, if you needed to do anything in the house, there's always a guy for it, there's always somebody that we could just pay that will come and do those things. Things like even managing trash, right? You know, in Nigeria, he wasn't managing trash. Um, most times, it's either Amache or Elizabeth will take the trash outside and then the gatesman will pack it up and go and trash it, okay? But here, he's one that has to pack it and take it outside, even though the outside is very close, yeah, but you know, those are things that he didn't have to do when he was in Nigeria that like he's now doing here. Then another thing is that settling down here was a little bit difficult. Now it is not lost on me that we actually have things easy and you know things were actually easier than most people have it when they come to the UK, right? We actually have things easier. So it's not lost on me. However, things like even opening accounts, it's not easy to just change countries. Even if you're coming here for schooling, even for vacation self, if it's a long vacation, it's not easy. Not talk of uh, packing your whole life and just moving to a new country. There are so many things to learn, so many processes, so many, you know, lifestyle. And mind you, none of us have ever lived in the UK before. So it's not like, oh, we're familiar with anything. We're not familiar with anything. The first few weeks we all landed here, it was not funny. The first few weeks he landed here was not funny. The first few weeks after I landed, it was not funny. Yeah, so those first few weeks was not easy. There was so much adapting to do. So much. When I say so much, I mean so much adapting to do from sun up to sun down we were just trying to learn this trying to do this trying to get that trying to fix this trying to register that trying to register this you know plus the house too one self was not having skoi skoi you know that's the, the first house we wanted to get was not having skoi skoi eventually we found out that the landlord you know wanted to sell the house so he basically put the house for sale i don't know if he has sold it now but he put the house for sale yeah so there was so much to do in those first few weeks when we arrived that it just felt like you're trying to swim and they drop you in the deep end of an Olympic swimming pool. That's how it felt, okay? It felt like they just carried someone who did not even know anything about swimming and then dropped the person in the deep end of the swimming pool to start swimming. So it's either you die or you float, okay? So that was how it felt those first few weeks. But now we have adjusted quite a bit. So it's not that bad again now. But those first few weeks, it was not funny. Yeah, I had to put my eyelashes off camera because it is a mess. I don't know how to, I still struggle with putting eyelashes on. And I think I figured out what is giving me red eyes because my eyes have started changing color now. I think it's the eyeshadow, okay? Because I remember that it is after I added that eyeshadow under my eyes that I started feeling that tingling sensation and now my eyes are getting red again but I need to film quickly before they turn like really really red and I'll look like an Igbo smoker <laughs> that's how I looked for the past one week <laughs> you will see me you will say it's either I cried bitterly like all day or I just finished smoking Igbo so yeah it hasn't been easy adjusting to life here sometimes it does feel like a rat race let me not even lie sometimes it feels like we're in a rat race it feels like it's just sun up sun down you're just grinding there's no break there's no time to even relax even the time that you're relaxing in quote is not real relaxation because you are trying to figure out something like now that we have this whole driving test thing hanging in the air for me it's still hanging in the air for him is a reality because he has to do his own soon but for me it's something that's just hanging in the air i just know that <laughs> they play that's how i feel so i am not totally relaxed there's always something to do for the kids i'm always worried that i hope they are adjusting well i hope i'm doing the right thing they need right now you know sometimes i even forget to go through eva's um assignments for cora yes cora does her assignment on her own for eva she does it on her own but i'm supposed to you know supervise it and then give my notes on it sometimes i forget you know because i have so much to do in a day um, um, sometimes I worry about Sophia. I hope she's not going to be behind. My husband keeps reminding me that all their kids here, how many of them go to school and they're not behind, okay? So, like, I should stop worrying about her being behind. But sometimes I worry about it. I'm like, ha, ah, hope Sophia is not behind, though. Like, my special girl. <laughs> Sophia is my special child, please. I don't want anything that will set her back in any way. Sophia is actually a very, very smart child, like very, like incredibly smart. So I don't want anything that will set her back in any way. You know, things like that are things that I worry about on a daily basis. But yeah, we have God on our side, okay? So we always pray about it. I always pray for strength and I always pray for wisdom and guidance to navigate this phase of life. Because without God helping us, we are definitely going to break down. We are definitely, like it's, it's something that's going to happen if we don't have God helping us. But 
we also have to help ourselves by knowing when to take a break. You know, we're actually planning vacation already. The funny thing is that my husband has changed a lot from the husband I knew in Nigeria, okay? And that is why even me, I have changed a lot. My perspective on so many things have changed. There's someone that comes to my comment section. The person has done it on YouTube. I blocked the person on YouTube. The person went to Instagram and did it twice about how I said I was not going to leave. After answers, I said I was not going to leave Nigeria and then now I have left Nigeria. Blah, 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 blah. The person said I betrayed my subscribers by saying I will not relocate but here I am relocating. All I can say to those people and whoever else is harboring the same sentiment, all I can say to all of you is that if I can betray myself, if I can deceive myself into renovating a rented apartment, into starting a business in Nigeria, into doing so many things that I did last year before we now traveled, if I can deceive myself into doing it then who are you? Who the hell are you? Who the F are you that I cannot deceive you? <laughs> No, seriously. If I can deceive myself into spending my husband's money, renovating house and doing so many things that I did in Nigeria before we now eventually left and forfeited all those things, if I can deceive myself into doing that, then my dear sister, you, you, are, you are nobody to me, okay? But on a serious note, let me even go back to what I was trying to say, okay? My perspective on so many things has changed since I got here. I now start asking myself, why was I so adamant about not leaving Nigeria? I don't see, I, I don't see understand why it was preparing me like that when I was in Nigeria because there are so many opportunities here. There are so many learning experiences experiences here so far that I have seen, I am now seeing this as an adventure and I think that is the greatest thing that is helping me to actually do well and thrive because for me, I am actually thriving, okay? What has helped me the most is a mindset shift, okay? Because I shifted my mindset from feeling like, oh, I'm going to a foreign man's land, I'm going to go and suffer, I'm going to do this one, that one, that one. I've shifted my mind from that to this is a new adventure for me and my family. So now where I am in my headspace is that I am actually looking forward to more more adventures. Who knew? Like, who knew? I'm actually looking forward to relocating to other countries, okay? So, I don't even see myself as someone who's going to be in the UK for a very long time or forever, okay? If it eventually happens like that, then fine, but I'm not planning to remain in the UK forever. I'm looking forward to, oh, what's the next best country that we can relocate to and experience a new... In fact, I'm even looking forward to going to a place that has a different language, not English, okay? Maybe English and a different language. So, maybe somewhere like the Middle East or somewhere like Spain or somewhere like, I don't even know where, Greece, all those kind of places where they speak English but they also have their own language. I'm looking forward to experiencing different cultures now because I now see this as, oh, this is an adventure for me and my family. So yeah, since I got here, I have changed my mind on so many things and I'm going to be discussing those things with you in subsequent videos as the days go by, but I have changed my mind on so many things and also I feel a sense of peace that I did not feel when I was in Nigeria. I don't know how to explain it, okay? I don't know how to explain it. Like, I did didn't even know that I was not as peaceful as I could have been, okay? <laughs> like when I was in Nigeria, I didn't even know that I did not have complete peace, okay? The kind of peace I'm experiencing here, it's mind-blowing, okay? I'll get into that in subsequent videos. But I think that most of the questions that have to do with me settling down here, I think I've kind of answered them somehow, okay? So someone is asking, how has the change of environment been for you personally, okay? Yeah, so I don't think I answered from my own perspective how things have been. So the change of environment, aside this thing that I don't know what it is, okay and i try to moisturize this place a lot but i don't know what it is okay so i size this thing i think the change of environment has been good for me because i like cold weather okay i normally like cold weather i don't like extreme cold i don't like extreme heat okay i just like a cool weather which is what i have most times inside the house the house is just cool sometimes it actually gets really hot here so i have to adjust the heater and open windows up sometimes or put off the heater sometimes okay but for the most part the house is cool the weather is cool so i don't have that ahumbaka scene that i usually have when i was in Nigeria. <laughs> the easiest way I can describe Ahumba Kasi is pepper body, okay, like always feeling agitated, right? I don't have it as much here like I used to have it in Nigeria because here the weather is cool, the environment is cool, the environment is beautiful. Now we're entering spring, or we're actually in spring already, the flowers are blooming. Like, I can't even explain the kind of joy and peace i have in this place that i did not have in nigeria and the fun fact is that when i was in nigeria i did not know that i did not have it <laughs> okay i did not know that i did not have it maybe it's just a djc thing maybe it's because i'm just new here okay maybe with time i will start experiencing all the gloominess that you know they say they experience in the uk personally i am not experiencing that gloominess i don't feel depressed some days i feel 
not so myself but i don't feel depressed i don't feel so gloomy and each time i'm even feeling not so myself i know what is causing it is either my period is about to start or i'm stressed out because of a certain thing i need to achieve or a certain task i need to achieve okay but that overwhelming gloominess with your environment that people say they experience it has not i've not experienced it even though i came here in winter i did not experience it okay i take vitamin d though i take vitamin d not every day when i remember sometimes once a week sometimes every day but whenever, whenever i remember remember i take vitamin d but yeah i have not felt seasonal affective disorder or whatever sadness <laughs> I've not felt it since I came here, okay? Okay, someone is asking, is there a Nigerian community in Norwich? Yes, there is a Nigerian community in Norwich, but I'm not a part of it. I don't know anything about it, but I'm only saying there is because someone told me that there is, but I don't really know about the Nigerian community in Norwich. There is an African shop here. There, are, There's one African shop that I know of, and then there is Spice Land, which is a... It's not African shop, but they carry African food stuff here. So every month, I buy from them, and I buy in bulk, and they just supply to my house. I don't go to the African shop. I just order online. It's food by cpc so i just order online and then her husband usually delivers it here for me so i order things like plantain in bulk i usually order half carton actually half carton of plantain um i order my meats from them as well so that is my beef i order bread from them the um abuja bread i order in bulk i order like four and put it inside my freezer um what else did i order from them i've ordered things like okra from them i think i've ordered pepper once but i prefer buying pepper from spice land because they have habanero pepper i actually prefer habanero habanero pepper i don't think food by cpc has it so my husband usually helps me to buy habanero pepper from spice land when he's coming back from work if i need but we usually buy large quantity but yeah i'm still new i still have most of my food stuff from nigeria so i haven't ordered things like fish things like crayfish things like red oil all those things i haven't ordered them it's just what I just mentioned, plantain, meat, and um, okra, and bread. I order from them most times. Now, let me even answer this question. This is a very good question. Someone is saying, what are the biggest challenges you are facing adapting to life in the UK? What are the things you are most grateful for after your relocation so far? Okay. So, the biggest challenge I'm having with adapting to life in the UK. Okay, actually two challenges, right? The two biggest challenges I'm having with adapting to life in the UK is that number one, time. You guys, 24 hours is not a enough for me when i say this thing it sounds like a joke but i'm i'm being dead serious 24 hours is not enough for me i go to bed exhausted i wake up exhausted okay i go to bed exhausted not having completed some of the tasks i'm supposed to complete okay <laughs> I go to bed exhausted. I wake up exhausted. I wish I had more time. And the only way I can have more time is to actually buy the time, okay? So buy, pay somebody to do some things that I do during the day. But number one, it's expensive. Number two, I don't even know how to go about it, okay? Because forget how expensive it is actually because it is something that is actually doable for me considering that I actually work from home, okay? So it's something doable for me. However, I don't even know how to go about it. I don't know, I don't, I don't know where to start from. Let me just put it that way. So I'm not even confident getting somebody or trying to get i'm not even confident in it okay so that is why i still struggle a bit with time because i don't even know how to go about getting somebody i don't know i don't know the logistics of how it's going to run i don't want a living help okay i don't want a living help i don't even want an everyday help i don't want a living help i don't want an everyday help so how do i get somebody to come and help me when i need the help <laughs> okay then even cleaners how do i go about getting cleaners i've tried to check online i've gotten somebody but I'm, i don't know i'm a bit iffy about it because i've heard bad reviews about cleaners as well so yeah my challenge is we need to actually pay to get some time back okay we need to actually buy some of our time back that's one of my challenges then the second one is that i haven't really made friends around me yet okay so i have friends here i even have friends in norwich but they are not around me here okay so i wish i just had like a neighbor that I can just go to the neighbor's house and sit down and say, okay, now start from beginning and be telling me how do I do this, how do I do this, where do I do this, where do I do, where do I do that, okay? I wish I had that, but I don't have it. So I'm trying to figure out so many things by myself. But I still have like two people in this Norwich that I go to all the time. I'm sure... I'm sure sometimes you'll just be like, nee, eh. <laughs> you never see anything. So I have two people that I go to, Nigerians, I mean, okay, Nigerians, that I go to all the time with, okay, I want to make my hair, how do I make my hair, or where do I make my hair, or do you have a plug for making hair, Um, where do I get this, where do I get that, I have two people that I do that with, but I don't have people around me with children close to my age, or children who attend the same school that my children attend, that will just help me understand the way things work around here, I don't have it yet, I'm still looking forward to summer when I will catch some people outside okay catch me outside i'm gonna catch you guys outside whenever you come out of your house i'll just be peeping when you come out of your house means i'll, I'll run out <laughs> 
But anyway, all in all, all I can say is that it has not been easy. It feels like a rat race most times. But on the flip side, I'm actually happy. I'm actually at peace. I'm actually thriving and i'm actually looking forward to more adventures i don't know how those two things can exist but they do exist okay that's why when people say i now understand why when people complain and you tell them come back to nigeria they're like you don't understand i now get it right i now get the fact that yes i'm complaining you no know, but i don't want to go back to nigeria <laughs> Yes, it's not easy, but I like it here, okay? That is just how I can explain it. Those two things can totally exist together. You can actually be fed up with this place, but actually don't want to leave this place, okay? That's how I feel right now. I'm not even fed up with this place, to be honest, because, again, so many factors are working in our favor. Like, I can't even pretend. I can't even come and pretend like, oh, I'm suffering. I'm not suffering, okay? I'm not suffering. I have so many things at play here that most people don't have. So, I'm very, very grateful that I have those things. I'm not even taking them for granted one bit, okay? I'm not even trying to come and start bubbling anybody. Like, no, I'm not I'm not taking it for granted. I'm very, very happy with the way we got here, okay? However, it's not easy. And I even sympathize with those who did not come through the kind of routes that we came through i don't even know how they do it those are the people that i should be asking nee, how are you doing it because I, I can't i can't i can't even fathom not having some you know soft landing that we had when we got here i can't even fathom not having it i would have gone back to nigeria i, I would have carried my children back and i'm like nope nope I would have packed my children back to Nigeria if we didn't have some of the soft landing that we have, okay? But yeah, I am kind of done with my makeup. I haven't done lipstick. I only put like lip liner around my lips. I'll put my lipstick after I am done installing the hair. Thank you guys so much for watching. I hope you guys enjoyed watching. I'll see you all in my next video. Bye guys.